couple of months, we've been talking about the authority of the believer. And authority means when you have the authority, that means you're the one that gets to make the final decision about what's happening in your life. And uh, like we said, uh, real quick review in Genesis 1, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let this man that I've created, let them have dominion. That means absolute ownership over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over everything that creepeth upon the earth. God throughout his word has constantly reminded us that we have authority, amen. Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, behold, I give you power to walk upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Second Corinthians chapter 12, God tells Paul when Paul comes to him three times and he says, get Satan off of me. And God said, I'll be down in a minute to get him. No, oh, that's not what he said. He said, my grace is sufficient. I've already given you everything you need Jesus has already gone to the cross and he's already destroyed hell, death, and the grave. Amen. So now you have the authority and you walk in that authority. And that's what we've been talking about over the last, well, I realize now this is less than eight, so it's been two months. Amen. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible does God, well, I shouldn't say this, uh, in the New Testament is God telling us to go to him to talk to him about our problems. Jesus taught us to talk to our problems about our God. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, whosoever shall say to the mountain, whosoever shall say to their problems, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And the reason why God didn't say, come talk to me about your problems, because I've already given you what's our title, the authority over your problems. Amen. Don't come talk to me about uh, uh, your financial situation. Talk to your financial situation about what God said. Amen. Talk to me about your health situation. Talk. No, prayer is saying what God has already said. Amen. All right, let's just review. Our, our, uh, our, our, our foundation scripture is found in Romans 12, 1 through 3 in the Amplified. And it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you, this is Paul talking, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, wholly devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service. I like that, the way it amplifies. It's only reasonable, rational, intelligent, logical, that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, that you are to present your body as a living sacrifice. And then he goes on to say, and do not, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but transformed and change by the entire renewal of your mind. That's all the Bible is written for, is to get us to change our mind, amen? Is to change our mind so that we could have the mind of Christ. By its new ideas, this word of God, by its new ideas and its new attitudes, uh, so that you may prove for yourselves. <laughs> Here's what, you don't have to prove anything to God. God already knows this word works. How many of you know that? God says, I want you to prove to yourself, glory to God, that what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Amen. He said, I want you to prove to yourself, if you trust this word, that it works for you. Amen. Amen. You know, if you come up and tell me something, uh, you know, the Bible's good, the, the, the Bible's great, the word of God is good. The, the obvious question is, is it working for you? <laughs> you know, even sometimes when I get attacked on social media by different religious organizations or religious groups, and um, they want to attack the things that I teach, and uh, I always come back and I say, well, this is working for me. <laughs> I mean, this, this got me through 40 years of marriage, glory to God. I raised two, two good boys, amen, amen. Uh, I'm living good. This works for me, so why should I stop living the way that I'm living to start living like you living? What is this doing for you? How, how are you and your woman getting along? Because usually it's a guy. I say, how are you and your woman getting along? Usually it's silence. 
What's your children like? You taking care of your children? Usually a guy. Uh, 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 are you taking care of your children? I took care of all mine. How you doing? Because this is working for me because he said prove. Prove it to yourself so that you can know it for yourself. Amen. And so we talk, we've been talking about changing the mind. Change is the sign that your mind has been renewed. And it's changing three areas we talked about. That you first have to change the way that you think, change the way you speak, and change the way that you act. If you have not changed in all three areas, you have not changed. He said, change the way that you think. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Change the way that you speak. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The Bible talks about the, the death and life is where? So I got to change the way that I think. But it also got to change the way that I act because faith without works is what? It's dead. Amen. All right. Now, let's, let's uh, see if we can get back to where we were at last week. And we were talking about the power or the authority when you use godly confessions. All of that was reviewed, but here's where we're at today. Confessions. Confession simply means to speak the same thing that God speaks, to speak the promises of God, to speak your allegiance, loyalty, beliefs, and commitment to God's word. And if you don't get it all, get it off of YouTube later on today. Okay. <laughs> but again, it says that to speak the same thing. In the Greek, it's called homologio. It means to speak the same thing that God says. To speak the promises of God. To speak your allegiance and loyalty and beliefs and commitment to God's word. Jesus put it this way in John chapter 15. He said, John 15, 7, he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. He said, if you abide in me, if you are Jesus, who was Jesus? Jesus was the word made flesh. John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Verse 14 says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son, that Jesus is the express image of God's Word. And Jesus said, if you abide in me, if you abide in my words, and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. This is when our confessions work because we're not just uh, picking stuff out of the air to say, we're saying what God said about us in our current situation. And that's what, uh, even coming to church today, um, you're listening to me, but you should be hearing God. I'll say that again. You're listening to me, but you should be hearing God because God is the word behind my word. And you should be getting a word for your current situation. How many of you know everybody in here got a different current situation? My current situation is not your current situation. Amen. But God has a word for you. If you abide in his word, he will have a word for you in your current situation. And that's what you should leave church every time you hear the word of God. Every time you hear the music ministry, you hear prayer. Is that I walked away with a word of, from God. Not just, I just didn't hear, to the, hear the word of God. But I got a word from God that can help me in my current situation. And now I can speak that word that I got from God that can help me in my situation because he said if I abide in him and his words abide in me, I can ask what I will. Does this make any sense to you? Amen. Hebrews 10, uh, 13 in the New Living Translation, it, it, it says it like this. When we talk about confession, that he, he, it is so important that Paul got a revelation of this revelation, a revelation of confession. He says, let us hold fast. <laughs> when you hear the word hold fast, it sounds like don't let go. Amen. Don't don't let go. You know, uh, kind of like when I used to ride roller coasters, man, I used to hold that thing. <laughs> I noticed I said used to uh, when I used to ride them. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm retired now. But when I used to ride them, and I'm talking about the ones that go straight up and straight down, and I used to hold fast, wasn't going to let go, making sure that that thing that supposed to be that safety lock was working, amen. And, uh, you know, if things got real tough, I just held on to Carol, or, you know. <laughs> let us hold fast. 
Paul says in Hebrews 10, 13, 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. The King James says without doubting. For he, watch this now, for he who promised these, these words is faithful. If you hold fast. Amen. If you don't let go. And Paul says over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, he says, while we look not at the things that are seen, it may not look like it. But the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are temporary and subject to change. So hold fast. Amen. Hold fast to God's word. And because it's been these words that gets us from salvation to eternal life. From uh, Lieutenant yesterday at Men's Fellowship. He, he, he started telling us what the great exchange was with God's word and, and God takes us from unrighteousness to righteousness. He takes us from sick to healing. He takes us from lack to prosperity. He says, I want to make this, this exchange. Well, what's this exchange? How do we make this exchange to get what God has working in our lives? He said, it's through your words. If I can just take you on the journey of even how you got saved, it was nothing but words. Uh, Jesus said over in Matthew 16, 13, he asked his disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? Who, who are they saying that I am? And they says, uh, some of the disciples said, some say you're like John the Baptist. Some say you're like Jeremiah. Others say you're like Elijah or one of the prophets. But he spoke to the 12 and he said, but who do you say that I am? Peter rose and said, you are the Christ. Watch these words. Watch these words. He said, watch these words coming out of Peter's mouth. He said, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said in response to what Peter said, blessed are thou Simon Barjona. He said, based on what you said, Peter, you're blessed. Blessed are thou Simon Barjona for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. You've heard from God. You have got a word from God. Amen. And he said, upon, this word, upon these words, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against those who speak my words. Glory to God. That's shouting ground right now. He said, you recognize that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, everybody that comes into my church. Everybody that's, that's a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about somebody who just joined some organization. I'm talking about those who have committed their lives to Jesus Christ. He said, everybody that comes into my church must recognize that I am the Christ through the words of their mouth. Paul put it like this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. He said, what saith it? The word is nigh thee. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you you shall, you shall confess. confess. Good God. He said, if you, you shall, shall confess, confess with your mouth, confess, confess what? what? What Peter what said, said, that he's that the he's Christ, the son of the living God. God. That if that you shall confess, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you would be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That you confess your way to your salvation. And then he says this in Colossians 2, 6. Oh, this is powerful. He said, as you received who, as you received him, as you received Jesus Christ, walk ye in him. The same way that you received him, how did I receive him? I said what Peter said, and I kept repeating what Peter said, and I got saved. He said, that's how you walk in him, by saying what he said. Just keep speaking what God speaks. He said, that's how you lived your saved life. The same way you received him. So walk ye in him, built up in the word of God. That's how I walk in him, the same way I received him. Amen. And so, again, your confession is so critical to your life as a believer. Uh, Paul, Paul, he says this, uh, right, first write this down, 1 Timothy 6, 12. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Well, <laughs> that begs the question, if I'm supposed to fight the good fight of faith, what is the fight? What is the fight? Is the fight against the devil? Is the, no, he said, no, he's defeated. Is the fight against people? No, he said, uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, so I can't fight against my wife. 
Can't fight against y'all. For some of y'all who want to fight out in the parking lot when we leave, that's not who your fight is with. Amen? Can't fight with my boss because my fight is not with my... What is the fight? The, the fight is to hold on to God's word. That's my faith fight. My fight, is, my fight is not people. My fight is not bills. My fight is not health. My fight is to hold on to God's word. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Well, what is fighting the good fight of faith? Therefore, take four things to, to fight this fight. The, number one is believing God's word. Amen. <laughs> is believing God's word. They asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, what, 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 was, what in John, I believe it's John 6. He said, they asked Jesus, Jesus what, how can we do what you're doing? He said, believe. <laughs> he said, believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, believe. But believe. Uh, uh, Hebrew chapter, uh, uh, somebody, he, he, said, he said, it's impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And they that come unto him must believe that he is. Uh, I forget where that's at. Uh, anybody remember where that's at? Hebrews what? Anybody? Okay, that's right. It's in the Bible. Look it up. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And they that come unto him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How do I seek him? I believe his word. I believe his word. That's the second first thing about this faith fight is I've got to believe his word. Second thing, I got to receive it as my own. I got to take ownership. When he says I'm the heal, that's me. When he said you're blessed, that's me. Amen. When he said you're above only and not beneath, that's me. When he said you're always triumphant, that's me. Glory to God. Amen. And when he says you're more than a conqueror, you've got to say that that's me. You've got, to, you've got to make this thing personal in your life. You've got to make this thing that I own this. This belongs to woke you up, didn't it? Amen. You ain't sleeping in this church. Amen. <laughs> I'm like, Marsha, like, where did my heart go? Believe it's in your body. Believe that your heart is right where you left it. Amen. <laughs> you got to believe it. And you got to receive it. The Bible says in the book of Peter that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. God is not going to give us anything. He's already given it to us. It's ours. It's, it's called our inheritance. How many of you know that inheritance, when you inherit something, it's already there? <laughs> Amen. It's already there. Shoot, I remember when my boys were little, I was telling them. I was telling them, just to let you know that your inheritance is already there, I was telling my boys, and I don't know, they might have been 10, 8, and, uh, and I was saying, you know, when I die, everything that I have is yours. And they didn't seem to be upset about the fact that I was dying. <laughs> I thought we would have some tears or something. My oldest son, Jay, said, Daddy, when you leave, I'm getting those shoes. <laughs> I said, dude, I ain't leaving this afternoon. Don't you be eyeing my shoes. I mean, I, I can buy you some shoes if you want them that bad. Amen. But I don't have to die for you to get my shoes. But he recognized they're already there. He had already been looking at them. He said, shoot, if you're going to die, I'm going to take what's already there. Jesus said, I have already provided for you everything you need. But you've got to believe. I'm talking about fighting the good fight of faith. He said, you've got to believe it. You've got to receive it like it's, this is mine. Glory to God. Amen. I'm talking about fighting the good fight of faith. Then the third thing, you've got to speak it. I've got to believe it. I've got to receive it. And I've got to speak it. The Bible says that he comes for our words. Satan and God come for our words. The Bible says in Mark chapter 4, that when the, cert, when the word is sown, Satan comes immediately. <laughs> what does he come for? The words. He says, I come for the words. If somebody has given you words of faith and you start believing those words of faith, I'm coming with doubt. I'm coming with fear. I'm coming with worry. Amen. I've got, give me those words because I know without those words, you can't fight. <laughs> without those words, you are powerless. Give me those words. 
Look around at your circumstances. Things aren't happening the way you thought they were going to happen. Give me those words of faith. Don't you keep confessing like it's yours. He says here, believe it. I've got to receive it. I got to speak it and I got to act like it's so. I'll say it again. When I'm fighting this good fight of faith, I've got to believe it. I'm not just talking about mentally assenting. I'm not talking about just agreeing that what God is saying is true. I'm talking out of I believe it down into my subconscious mind. I believe it to the point that you can't talk me out of it. Amen. Nothing can talk me out of it. I've got to believe it. I've got to receive it. I've got to constantly speak that word, regardless of what I see, regardless of what I feel, regardless of what they all the things that they are saying. <laughs> Man, how, how, how much time I got about five minutes or so? OK, OK. Let, let me take you on a quick journey. You all know the story about the woman with the issue of blood. Okay. In Mark, chapter five, man. Mm, mm, man, if I just had time, we, we go over there and read it. But, but, but trust me, it's in the Bible. It's in Mark chapter 5. This woman had this issue of blood. It sounded like something menstrual. Uh, she was menstruating, and she was struggling with this, and it sounded like something that was going on for 12 years. She struggled with this thing. She had gone to all the doctors. She spent all the money that she had, and the Bible says, and she grew no, she, she didn't get any better. In fact, she grew worse. But she knew about Jesus, and she heard Jesus was a healer. And she began, we write this down, she began to believe that Jesus could heal her of a situation. She began to believe that this, she began to receive it, glory to God, and say, this healing is mine. Amen. She began, and then she began to say something. She said, if I could just, come on, y'all know this, if I could just what? If I could just touch the hymn of remember now, I got to believe it, I've got to receive it, I got to speak it, and I got to act on it. And she said, <laughs> Oh, glory to God. She said, I believe that if I just touch the hem of his garment, the healing is mine. And she had to make her way through the crowd, the Bible said, because in her situation under Jewish culture, she was not supposed to be outside. She was never to be out in public while, when a woman was just no, on her normal cycle. She was not to be out in public. So she was taking a great chance to even be out in public. But she said, I've got to get through the crowd. And there was a whole bunch of people around heard that Jesus was coming. And they said, I just want to see him. I just want to see this Jesus. I've heard so much about Jesus. If I just see him. But she said, I need to touch him. Glory to God. And she said, acting upon what she believed, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And she touched him. And Jesus stopped. Glory to God. <laughs> and he said, who touched me? And his disciples like, who touched you? Everybody trying to touch you. Everybody trying to get, everybody trying to in the crowd, you know. They just, everybody want to see something, but not everybody wants something. We want to be the ones that want something. We want to be the ones that say, I believe I got this thing. And he said, somebody touch me in faith. Somebody touch me and withdrew some power from me. And there she was. And, and, and notice now, Jesus did not come to minister to her because Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter who was dead. Jesus, Jesus didn't say I'm going. Uh, uh, Jesus was headed to Jairus' house to heal his daughter who was dead at the time. He wasn't there to he wasn't there to, to minister to this woman. He never said I'm looking for a woman with an issue of blood, <laughs> which lets me know it's your words that gets his attention. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not about him looking for you. It's about how much you want from him. Glory to God. It wasn't about it wasn't about what what Jesus was saying. I'm looking for a woman with an issue. No, I'm headed to J. Iris's house. And even when he got to J. Iris's house, he got there and he got there and they said, oh, Jesus, you can leave. The girl is dead. And Jesus said, she's not dead. And the Bible says, and they laughed him to scorn. Like, where did you get this dude from? This, this girl been dead for, this girl been dead for a few minutes now. And you talking about, uh-uh. So Jesus did something, and sometimes this, this, this is a word. He put them all out. 
except Peter and James and the parents. He put them all out because there's some folks in your life that are speaking doubt, fear, worry, and unbelief. How many of you know you got to put them out? <laughs> you have to put them out. Glory to God. He put them all out. And he began to speak over this word and she wrote over this young girl and she was healed. So anyway, my confession always agrees with God. And I have to speak what I believe, what God says over my relationships, over my finances, over my health, over my career, over my ministry, over everything that I'm involved with. God wants us to speak his word. Well, you get blessed. I'm out of time.